Good afternoon, I'm uh, Maciej Mikos. Um, uh, welcome back to World uh, Talks, uh, where every word matters. So, on October 26th, Georgia will decide its fate. Which will it be? The West or the East? Will Georgians uh, follow in the steps of Moldovans and choose a pro-European path? Or rather, become a Russian satellite. And to discuss uh, the issue, we're joined by uh, Grigol Hanjulukidze, Associate Professor at the Caucasus University. Good afternoon. It's good to see you, Grigol. Thanks for having me, Maciej. Thank you for joining us. So, uh, who's leading in the, in the latest uh, polls? That's the most complicated questions because in Georgia, unfortunately, each political party has its own uh, exit polls and uh, own researches. And in the most common cases, they do not correspond to the reality. Pro-governmental propaganda says that the government will get more than 55%, which has nothing in common with the truth. As for the opposition parties, they mainly rely on uh, the Western exit poll uh, surveys and uh, but they claim that uh, they're able to uh, form a coalition which will uh, defeat the acting government, the Georgian dream. Mm -hmm. As for the final impressions, uh, as you know, three more days, actually 48 hours are left before the uh, elections are kicked off. Uh, we see that the government uh, uh, has much more possibilities to lose these uh, elections than it had uh, in previous elections. Mm -hmm. What are the hot topics of uh, this year's campaign? The war. The mm -hmm. whole propaganda is constructed on, on the war. I mean, the governmental propaganda. Uh, we do not see any positive agenda offered by the ruling team. We see only the toxic statements. Uh, if you do not vote for us, there will be war in Georgia. Uh, the second front will be opened and uh, uh, the Georgia will be dragged into war by the so-called global war party. Nobody knows what this does, what does it mean. Uh, and if the Georgian rule, the, the Georgian dream will be kicked out from the power, then this uh, uh, some kind of revisionist forces will uh, result to the, f the full annihilation of Georgia and the loss of sovereignty and uh, uh, violation, a complete violation of territorial integrity. Another issue is Russia, that uh, we are under the uh, direct threat from the Russian Federation, which is partially true, but the only thing that the governmental propaganda is doing is to underline this, uh, uh, let's say, issue and repeat over and over that uh, that's the time of uh, that's the question of time. Will the where, uh, when the full territory of Georgia will be occupied by the Russian Federation in case of the defeat uh, in the upcoming elections? Mm -hmm. And uh, are Georgians falling for this sort of narrative? Are they buying it? It's hard to say, but I have an impression that not, especially in the bigger cities, which are the capital city, Tbilisi, Batumi, Kutaisi, Rustavi. And the uh, peculiarity of the Georgian electoral system is the following. Those political parties who win the uh, capital city, they form the government. And uh, we see uh, this upcoming tendency in, in these elections because uh, uh, the capital city, Tbilisi, where almost the half of the population lives, um, is quite anti-governmental, especially after the May events and uh, the reintroduction of this uh, controversial law on foreign uh, agents and influences. Another quite important issue is the participation of immigrants. The motivation is so high from the among the immigrants that they come back to Georgia because the Georgian central government did not allow them to uh, what, vote. What, what numbers are we talking about? More than 100,000 Georgians mm -hmm. right now. As far as I know, 135,000 Georgians are registered uh, abroad. 
but that's a very small portion of these immigrants because a lot of people were not able to register uh, in, in, in their uh, in the embassies where they they live because of several factors. Either they live there illegally or the distance from their location and to the uh, embassy is too far. For example, if someone lives in Gdansk, he's not able to come back to, to Warsaw. And that's why he or she prefers to buy a low cost ticket and come back to Georgia and vote then to go to, to, to Gdansk. And at the same time, he or she will be able to see their relatives. And uh, this growing motivation uh, gives the hope to opposition. And we expect that the turnout will be up to 70%, 70 to 75. Uh, and that's quite an optimistic thing. So there's a clear motivation on the um, uh, side of the opposition. But uh, then on the other hand, the Georgian uh, Dream, uh, the ruling party, is uh, holding a, uh, a rally right now in Tbilisi. And uh, do you think they can also mobilise uh, some electorate that is not yet sure who to vote for? They uh, quite well understand what's the reality. Now, you have mentioned about the rally that is go ongoing, is going on right now in the, in the capital city. Uh, at least the majority of these participants are the, uh, the, the, the employed, are employed in the state services. Uh, they are under the central budget financing, uh, and that's why they were some kind of obliged to attend this uh, demonstration. But anyway. The, so we, it is very much not, a Russia style of a, of a rally, right? Sure, that's the modus operandi, mm -hmm. which is widely used in Georgia, not only by this government. By the way, the previous government had the same approach of Mikhail Saakashvili, so we do not see anything new in this regard. But of course, uh, the Georgian dream has uh, uh, quite important support in the regions uh, where people are, are vulnerable in terms of conspiracy theories, propaganda, and... Uh, and uh, the, the, the subjects related to this. But generally, the elections are won in big cities in Georgia. That's the peculiarity of this country. Uh, one of the leaders of, of the opposition is a man responsible for brutal tackling uh, of, of um, anti-governmental protests back in the, in the past. Now, is, is it helping the, the chances of the opposition? We are talking about the most ambitious politician, uh, uh, Georgi Gaharia, who, by the way, has uh, the, the, the Russian education. He studied uh, at Moscow University, and he's a quite controversial uh, figure in Georgian politics. He, for example, is the former prime minister, is the responsible for, um, uh, for, for the excessive use of force uh, uh, on June 20, uh, 2019. Um, and uh, as the result of his uh, orders, dozens of Georgians, youngsters, were brutally beaten by the police, and some of uh, the demonstrators lost their eyes, and uh, the, the, they got some uh, incredibly uh, grave injuries. As for his chances, uh, I would say that, uh, yeah, he's one of the main uh, balances of power in the opposition. He most likely will get up to 12, 13 percent in the upcoming elections. And his strategy is based on the principle that the last word is on me. I will decide which political party will have much more uh, influence in the potential, in the upcoming government, newly government that uh, will be formed in case of victory of the opposition. Uh, is he asset for the opposition? Hard to say. Uh, because uh, owing to his personal ambitions and uh, quite problematic uh, uh, approach, he's not, uh, uh, let's say, seen as the main ally of the leading opposition forces. But I'm pretty sure that without his support, the opposition will not be able to form the government. We know that the opposition is a true uh, mosaic of, of, of groupings of, of, uh, of, of parties in, in Georgia, but uh, who can uh, be the next uh, Georgian uh, prime minister? And do you think that the, that the opposition can truly form this government to last for a long time, or, or should we rather expect some uh, early elections soon? Well, the first part of the question is very difficult to answer. It's much easier to answer who's going to win the Champions League in, in this <laughs> ongoing competition. Uh, well, so, seriously speaking, I would say that there is the plan B proposed by the president of Georgia, Salome Zurabishvili. She understands quite well these ambitions of uh, the political leaders. 
uh, and uh, the vulnerability of this potential coalition, because I remind you that the coalition mm, coalitions work hardly even in the strong democracies and not talk about Georgia. And that's why she has a plan B in case of uh, the uh, unsuccess. Um, of these uh, talks in regard to the formation of new government, she proposes uh, a temporary government uh, which will last only one year. And this uh, temporary government, which will be formed not by politicians, uh, <clears throat> will implement the nine recommendations of the European Union in order to get the accession negotiations. And uh, after uh, a year, this technical government will organize uh, 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 parliamentary elections. I see. Uh, Grigol Julukidza, Associate Professor at the Caucasus University, was our guest this afternoon. Thank you so much for Thank explaining you. us the current situation in Georgia. Thank you, Grigol. And thank you for watching. That will be all for now. And stay with us for much more here on TVP World.